Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Closing Trades on 18 Now. I'm Anisha Jain. With me is Aisha Faridi. And it's the red that continues to be uh, the you know most important color on the screen. On the screen, it is 21,500, which has been given up by the index 21,400 thereabouts. So, Aisha, clearly another red day for the market. Absolutely, Anisha, isn't it? Well, the joke is of course on Anisha's attire, not the market. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, half a percent lower. Actually, you know, it's really not that bad because you were bracing yourselves after that ADR fall of HDFC Bank, 9% overnight, um, to perhaps see a repeat of what yesterday was. So at an index level, we've sort of managed to defend that. And today it's not just IT, but names like Axis Bank, for instance, which have jumped up about one and a quarter percent. Yesterday, remember, all in every banking counter was painted red, but not quite the case today. Uh, Infosys, Kotak Bank ahead of its numbers on Saturday. That's uh, recovered ground. It's flat right now. Reliance marginally higher. LNT is up about 1%. SBI is higher by about half a percent. So some of these stocks are definitely supporting the index. But yes, what continues to be a drag, LTIM, that's still down 11%. There's HDFC Bank, although it's had some feeble attempts in today of a recovery. Uh, but still pretty much down and out. It's down about 3.7% on the futures as we speak right now. Uh, sub that 1500 per share mark on HDFC Bank. Let's bring on board then our experts and figure out where the trading day is headed next. Kunal Naresh on the show with us as always. Kunal, um, first the index and then of course HDFC Bank standalone. What's the reading on the charts now? So, would still expect HDFC Bank to get into a correction because after yesterday's data, the 25% jump in the open interest, <clears throat> as well as today's price action uh, from a gap down opening, mild pickup uh, or mild recovery, and then a break below that 1500 mark for HDFC Bank, it indicates that uh, the selling pressure is quite strong, and this could probably uh, trickle into the stock over at least the next, uh, you know, maybe one to two weeks. So, not expecting a very sharp kind of a price correction for HDFC Bank on an immediate basis, but maybe over the next two to three weeks, we would expect the stock to fall by at least another 5% to 7% further. Wow, 5 to 7% kind of cut is what uh, Kunal is expecting on HDFC Bank going forward. But let's go across to Naresh to get his view on the market right now. What do you make uh, of the levels that one should track for Nifty as well as Nifty Bank? It's, of course, today weekly options expiry, so that's important to keep in mind as well. So, uh, the Nifty and Bank Nifty levels have been uh, damaged thanks to the heavyweight HDFC Bank because that's the major impact. So, 50-60% of the fall can be attributed to uh, HDFC Bank itself, 13 to 14% of the Nifty, 30% plus of uh, the Bank Nifty. So, overall, if you look at it, 21,000, uh, 21,200 is the major support point. 21,450 was the recent swing low, which has been broken. But overall, uh, we are possibly getting into a range. At the same time, if you look at it, uh, today we saw a spike down on the mid cap and the small cap indices, but a majority of that uh, fall was recovered. So two, two and a half percent down, we are down only half a percent now. So overall, possibly we are getting into a range bound move on the index as well as uh, on the broader markets and we'll get into a, a period of next two weeks where there will be more earnings reaction there, rather than just uh, standard down moves. Sure, point taken. So that's the view coming in as far as the nifty level is concerned. LTI mine tree is one stock which continues to drag lower. It's down almost 10%. The management did allude to the fact that the client budgets haven't firmed up and wherever there's clarity, there's a bit of a decline which has come in. The synergies is something which hasn't really panned out yet and that is what is worrying the analysts and that's why we have seen a slew of downgrades come by for LTI mine tree. Let's quickly listen into the bite from the management and then we'll pose the question on IT to Sandeep Sabarwal as well. In the short term, we are seeing pressure from furloughs. Uh, the furloughs were deeper and wider than expected. Uh, verticals that normally did not have furloughs also had furloughs this this uh, in this quarter. And some of these furloughs are continuing into Q4, uh, which is why we have said that you know our Q4 will be in line with uh, with Q3. Uh, but as I said, the focus is really on you know securing mid to long term growth by fundamentally you know essentially ensuring that the order intake is strong for a multi-year growth path ahead. We continue to see caution in the environment. You know, clients that we have spoken with uh, across the board are still talking about, you know, keeping budgets flat to uh, to slightly negative. They're looking, they're still looking to drive cost efficiency. So the main 
driver for clients uh, right now. You know, post pandemic, the main driver was transformation. Currently, the main driver is is cost reduction. And uh, till the market environment improves, till we see, uh, you know, essentially a reduction in interest rates uh, and, uh, you know, more certainty in the political environment, I think clients will continue to be cautious about their budgets. Sandeep Sabarwal as well joins in the show right now. Sandeep, hi, afternoon. You know, just taking a leaf from the commentary coming in from LTI Mindtree. Some relief uh, purely because they were jumping up from oversold, uh, you know, numbers and oversold uh, pockets on Infosys and TCS. Do uh, you think IT henceforth will become a very case-by-case -case story as it was all through 23? It'll be case-by-case, case, but with risks also. Because many of the mid-cap companies have done very well relative to the large-cap ones. So any disappointment like we saw in the case of LTIM can lead to significant sell-offs. So expecting positive surprises is tough at this stage. A negative surprise uh, could lead to these kind of sell-offs. Secondly, uh, overall, we need to, we will also see that uh, the economic environment and the economic growth in the Western economy is going to slow down. So in a slowing economy, how these companies expect that businesses will business will actually pick up next year is very tough for me to understand at least. So I think as we come to the first quarter of next year and as these companies talk of outlook for 2024-25, I would think that there'll be further disappointments and investors need to be ready for that. So any sharp rallies in these IT stocks should be actually used to reduce exposures. Right. Sandeep, have to be the 80% um, of the lot to figure out what to do with HDFC Bank now, not just whether to buy it on dips, but whether to completely avoid. I think that's the question for now. I think for people who are holding the stock, <clears throat> I don't think they should be selling now because the downside could be maybe 10 12 percent more uh, not more than that for people who want to buy i think there are two things one if you get a 10 12 percent dip you are very risk averse you can buy dfc bank i think at from those levels it will become a safer investment or you can let it look at other banks other stocks because uh, many of the other banks or other financials will not face the same kind of issues which HDFC Bank is facing today in having to refinance uh, liabilities, facing regulatory issues related to the merger, etc., which could further still impact them for the next 12 to 15 months. Taken, but the other one which is seeing a bit of a result reaction today is Asian Paints as well. Though the volumes were on the higher side, the street is worried about the increased competition. Listen in to the management commentary wherein they are negating all the worries regarding the competition. I think it might be a good idea to kind of really watch out for a quarter to see in terms of how the overall margins pan out, the overall volatility of the uh, raw materials and also of the overall competitive activity to kind of take a call in terms of how the margins would have to pan out for future. If you see the construct of the industry, it is uh, also very clear that uh, there is a large potential in terms of the uh, overall economy premium products, which is there to that extent, given the large uh, bottom of the pyramid, which we have in our industry, also the unorganized uh, business to that extent. As I see, given the potential, which is there, uh, you know, uh, uh, companies will have to grow in the economy segment to kind of see overall good growths happening and good volume growths kind of coming in. So from that point of view, I think uh, the share of uh, luxury premium products would be at a certain level. So uh, I would say that at least uh, till the time people really upgrade to, you know, very high levels of luxury and premium products, we would see this kind of a difference uh, there for at least about uh, one to two years, definitely. Numbers for Tata Communications also for you at the bottom of the screen. It does look like the company has reported a net profit of around uh, 44 crores, but there must be an exceptional item to it. That's what we should wait by for, though the revenues have been closer to around 5,630 thereabouts. But Sandeep, a view on Asian pains. What do you think, uh, you know, explains the kind of move that we are seeing in the stock? And should one really worry about the competition? Because the management says that it will take at least three to five years for the rest of the competition to even come on our anvil. 
Oh, first of all, I think we are not coming, talking about normal competition here. It's Grassing who has entered with a 10,000 crore investment in the pain segment. So it's not a small investment. So I think they'll they'll go whole hog into the market in trying to get market share. Now for a new player, the advantage is that the margins of the incumbents is so high, like operating margins of 20, 22% that even if they want to come in with 5, 7% lower margins, pass on more to the distributors, they can do it and still make money. So I think that's the challenge the paint industry faces with the entry of grassing. Once, so Asian Paints is a great company, but unfortunately right now the valuations as well as the earning growth picture which will come in because of increased competition just not justify the valuations at which it trades. <clears throat> so my guess is it needs to trend down. We need to see the impact Grassim will make. In my view, they'll make a significant impact. They might not take too much market share immediately, but the pricing in the market will definitely take a hit and hit the margins of the existing pairs. So Asian paints, I don't think people should be buying right now. They'll get much better levels at some stage in the future. So don't be in a hurry to buy the stock of Asian paints because there could be better levels that might come on that one. In fact, let me uh, go across to Nuresh now and ask his view about a couple of these tyre stocks. Apollo Tyres is in focus incidentally today. Axis Cap also came out with a note wherein they've upgraded the stock to a buy uh, versus the earlier rating and they've increased the target price also substantially within the tyre space. And you're seeing, of course, an impact on Philips Carbon as well, which is one of those companies which makes the raw material or the material that goes into the tyres as well. Uh, Castrol India is also higher, JK Tire is up around 5%. Within these entire names which are buzzing around Nuresh, which is the one that you would take as a top bet? So starting off with uh, Apollo Tires has been uh, a good stock. It has performed really well. It is uh, already up quite a bit today. So the bet which I would go with is Seattle Limited. That's a stock which is yet to make up or very close to the previous all-time highs. And relatively, the stock was 2000 rupees back in 2017. Today it is at 2400, 2500. So that's a stock which still has a, an upside. And the next one would be JK Tires. And PCBL came out with numbers yesterday. So that's seen a spike up on that, but would wait for a decline on that one closer to 280 to 90 levels. So as of now, at current level, SEAT uh, looks promising. And then one could look at the other names. Anyway, that's the take coming in on the tire stocks. We'll take a very quick break, but come right back. We'll continue our discussion with our experts. Back with closing trades right here on 80 now. The Nifty is again seeing a bout of recovery coming in, led of course by a Techem, which is holding up 2.5%. There's Axis Bank pulled up about 1.25%. M&M is not doing bad. There's LNT, there's Bharti. And then SBI and Reliance are putting up a decent show, and I say decent only in contrast to where they were in yesterday's trading session. So marginally in the green for both those stocks, but definitely sitting at the day's high so far as well. Sandeep, what's the expectation from Reliance after what it did last week and saw a bout of recovery or pull up since uh, you know the commentary that was made at the Vibrant Gujarat Summit by Mukesh Ambani? What's the expectation from the earnings? Earning expectation this time are moderate in terms of expectations from oil to gas business, oil to chemical business, retail or even telecom. So I think to that extent, this time expectations are not so high. Talk uh, obviously moved after a long period of underperformance. So I think some amount of comeback was expected. Now uh, the key to watch always in the lens is <coughs> the movement of the overall debt and the free cash flows. And that is something which is uh, which I watch closely and which is important for the stock to actually perform. That's the expectations from Reliance. We'll get so much shortly to join us with all those expectations as well. But separately, wanted to flag out Tata Communications. Of course, the earnings were just out. The bottom line was marred by one exceptional item and the 185 crore hit that they have taken. But now there are incrementally com incremental commentary coming in from the management. They are saying extremely encouraged that Calera, which was one of the recent acquisition of the company, has turned EBITDA positive in the first quarter itself. They're also talking about how they see multiple 
possible levers to maximize value from both the organic as well as inorganic investments. They are saying that Switch and Calera have created newer avenues for growth and innovation and they remain confident about the near-term ambitions as far as Tata Communications is concerned and that stock is now piling on to gains as we speak. Kunal, your view on Tata Communications and secondly, IEX is the other stock I want to discuss with you. We had seen MCX on account of those overhangs had seen a massive drubbing, but from mm. there, that stock has returned, what, 100% already. Mm. Uh, do you think a similar uh, trajectory can be there for IEX? So the only change between MCX and IEX was that MCX was very volatile at 1800 mark. So I remember, I think the stock used to go into, you know, steep gyrations of 15, 20% swings in just a matter of few days. And when the stock, uh, when the news flow started to become positive for uh, MCX, the stock moved out of 2000 levels, then moved towards 3000 plus mark. There was a different texture of the stock altogether. And that's what we require for stocks when they move from a certain range on the downside towards a much higher range. Right? They change their beta, they change that uh, high degree of volatility, come back into stable uptrends. That's what trends they tend to last long. But for IEX, that's not the case so far. So even after this last, uh, you know, three, four months of price recovery from I think 125 to a point when the stock was almost at 170 plus mark, you know, and in this last sudden uh, three, four days of sudden sell-off for the stock, it again brings back the same point with the stock has been plagued uh, over the last couple of years, a uh, heightened degree of volatility. I think that should settle down for IEX for the stock to get into recovery and then maybe come back into the you know 200 to 50 kind of a club. But as of now, I would believe that IEX could remain to be an underperformer. There could be a point where I think closer to 125, 130, the stock may become attractive. So from a trading play, it could be an attractive, but from an investment play, I would still be a bit uh, uh, you know concerned about the stock's uh, chart patterns as such. And Tata Communications? I think it's a classical stock in the making. I think time and again, the stock has managed to outperform, uh, you know, moved ahead of the market expectations. There was a point when Tata Communications used to move in its own tangent, uh, you know, above 1500, 1700 plus mark. And then, you know, uh, comes a point when the stock got into a mild correction. But I think at 1750, would be bullish on Tata Communication, would expect the previous highs to be taken out, which is around the 1800, 1820 mark for uh, Tata Communication. Right. Sandeep, I know we've discussed HDFC Bank, but purely because you've got Kotak and ICICI Bank slated to deliver their numbers on Saturday, you think sentiment has been hit for private banks and the scope for disappointment could be larger for ICICI Bank and Kotak put together? Because, I mean, year to date, they've also not done pretty much a whole lot. I wouldn't agree with that. I think because of the fact that uh, expectations were not so high and expectations were not built up by the managements in the last quarter. So HDFC Bank clearly told investors that the margin trajectory could improve, etc. And so, so some of the comments they made, they couldn't deliver on that. I don't think that's the case with uh, Kotak or ICICI. Of course, Kotak valuations still are high. So... Uh, to that extent, uh, if there is actually a disappointment, it could lead to a sell-off like HDFC possibly. Uh, but I don't uh, personally feel that uh, we'll see any significant disappointment from these two banks. Kunal, you were making the observation, I think, what, Monday or maybe last week that mm. ICICI Bank was looking brittle mm. and, you know, kind of, and then, of course, we all know what happened with HDFC Bank. Mm. But what's the reading on the charts for ICICI Bank now? Because that's sort of a leadership name within banks, right? Yeah, so, you know, fortunately, the stock has been, a, you know, more of a resilient. a resilient stock because in the last two days when more selling has been inclined towards HDFC Bank, I think there are a few stocks which have been resilient. I think Indescent Bank... Access Bank today after that bounce also indicates that there's a slight bit degree of resilience over here. ICC Bank again hovering around the 980 mark shows that resilience nature for the stock. But that doesn't uh, you know take away the point that the stock has been a huge underperformer in the last 3-4 months of this market rally from that 18800 mark on the Nifty. Uh, so I think in that context when we look at the last 3-4 months of chart patterns, ICC Bank has underperformed. But just because the selling has been more uh, inclined towards HDFC Bank, you're seeing HDFC Bank, uh, uh, ICC Bank and many of the other private sector banking names, larger cap names, being a lot more resilient. So we'll have to wait out for a point when the selling in HDFC Bank stops out and then see whether ICC Bank and as well as the other PS, uh, private sector banking names, whether they continue to outperform, lead from the front and recover and you know, come back to maybe 1000, 1030 odd mark, for example, for ICC Bank. If that happens, then there is a clear change of context for the trends where we are now looking at underperforming, uh, underperformance being converted into a stronger degree of outperformance. So we'll have to wait out for maybe another week or so. 
Okay, let's wait for a week or so. But of course, over the weekend, we'll get the earnings and that should set the context as well. Time now to slip into a very short break. And thanks, Sandeep Sabarwal, for joining us on the show. But as we do that, listen in also to the take coming in from Sandeep Tandon as to what he's making of the banking sector because uh, caught, call it a bit fortunately, but they do not have any of the HDFC stocks in their portfolio. We have a thesis for smaller banks or close to book value will do very well. So RBL Bank or Karnataka Bank, JNK Bank, private sector bank, let's put me. Private sector bank, private sector NBFCs are still in the most admired territory. Some of the consumption names are still in the admired territory, not all. Okay, though we are very turning constructive on the consumption as a cycle, they are still in admired territory. Welcome back. The market is holding on to 21,450 thereabouts, but individual movers from the IT pack includes Oracle, which is up now 28%, so a solid surge there. It's an FNO stock, so uh, people there are making a lot of money, clearly. And you also have Suzdon Energy, which is high by 5%. A couple of these public sector entities like Bank of Maharashtra or Oil India have also perked up, and Tata Communications, which is a result reaction. In fact, Tata, talking about earnings, um, of course, Tata Communications has come out with its earnings, but it's Reliance Industries that will be reporting its numbers tomorrow. Let me take it across to Summit to get more details on the same. Hi, Summit. Reliance Industries, if you see, it is expected to be a muted set of numbers. Revenues are expected to be high by around 2 odd percent, but on the EBITDA front, we can see a decline of around 1.7 percent. Margins are expected to contract by nearly 70 basis points, while net profit is expected to be low by around 3 odd percent. Now, if you see segment-wise performance, it is the O2C segment, uh, which is expected to report a decimal sequential performance, 12 percent drop, which will lead to an entire EBITDA dropping by around 1.7 percent. Apart from that is the retail segment, which will see a healthy growth of around 7 odd percent, while the gas exploration segment is also expected to report an 8% growth on a sequential basis. Now, the reason why O2C segment is expected to report a weak performance is because of lower throughput and lower spreads. Now, lower spreads are because petrochemical margins were lower and throughput were lower because there was a planned shutdown in the third quarter of FY23. Retail segment, FY24, retail segment would benefit on the back of higher footfall, store expansion and operating leverage, while the gas exploration segment is expected to benefit owing to higher gas production and because of lower costs that we had seen in the third quarter of FY24 to sum it up, uh, it's the O2C segment that would report a decimal performance. Apart from that, all the other segments are, are expected to report a sequential growth. Right. And what about Reliance Geo Summit? What's the expectation there? Nothing exciting also expected from Reliance Geo. Uh, revenue, EBITDA, net profit all expected to grow anywhere between 2.5 to 3 odd percent. ARPU number is expected to be high by around 1 odd percent and this will be the seventh consecutive quarter where Reliance Geo will see a growth in their subscriber base. So, into the subscriber base and marginal growth in the ARPU, we are seeing a higher revenue, EBITDA, net profit number for Reliance Geo. Apart from that, the broadband segment is expected to see robust traction and the margin expansion, slight margin expansion that we are seeing on a sequential basis is purely on the back of the fact that the company has been capitalizing its 5G related cost. Now, apart from earnings, the key things to watch out for from Reliance Industries earning would be their uh, commentary on margin outlook, refinery, margin specific Apart from that, what is their roadmap when it comes to the new energy business? What is the update on the Geo Bharat phone that they had launched few quarters back? What is the capital expenditure plans going forward? How they are planning to monetize 5G? And any commentary coming in on tariff hike would be important to track from Reliance Industries earning. Okay, so that's the take coming in on Reliance and what to expect from Geo. Let's see what the company delivers. But it's going to be a very crucial weekend because Friday evening we'll get numbers from Reliance Industries. And then Saturday, of course, which is a working day, unfortunately, because of those uh, truncated sessions that NSC has announced. Uh, we'll get numbers from ICIC as well as Kotak Mahindra Bank as well. But uh, talking about earnings, Mayuresh, what are the earnings that really stood out for you? Because Polycap is the big one which is actually reporting numbers. The street was key. Keenly waiting by for those numbers as well. Just the fact that the company has still reported numbers and on an year-on-year basis, there's an increase of almost 500 crores in terms of revenue. 4,340 crores of what the company has reported versus 3,800 crores. And the profitability too is looking better at over 400 crore rupees. The stock had seen a sharp fall when that entire ruckus around the, uh, you know, the tax authority surveys, etc. was brought on. But for the last couple of days, it has been recovering a bit. Oh, it has been and I think the fact that they've declared their numbers signed by the auditors even though the case was a 
four-year-old case amidst a lot of, uh, you know, still confusion on whether or not it was polycap to begin with or not. Much like the company clarified that they didn't get any IT notice. But I think the markets should actually like these numbers and you should see a bit of a pickup further perhaps on account of that. Because optically it looks like a decent set. We don't have any estimates to go by. But in a bit uptick of about 13%, the pad as well has jumped up quite a fair bit on a year-on-year -year basis. That's polycab in mm. trade for you. But you know what? I think for the wires and cable segment, there's mm. a decline in the EBIT, even though there's okay. a revenue increase. So my guess is the margins in wires and cable segment has come off a bit. Even if you look at the FMEG segment, which is fast-moving electrical goods, the losses have actually expanded on an EBIT basis. So the loss this time for the FMEG segment is 36 crore versus 6 crore last time. And the the EBIT for the wires and cable segment is 547 crores versus 556 crore, even though the revenue has increased to 3904 versus 3804. So there is a definite miss on the margins, I believe. We'll wait by and get more details. And I'm also looking whether there's any exceptional or not. For me, I don't see any big exceptional or any big note right now from the management, which alludes to that entire, uh, you know, uh, the tax surveys. But it does say that the income tax authorities conduct surveys and we have extended the full cooperation the company has not received any written communication from the department as yet uh, the management after considering all available records and facts known to it in the view have uh, in the view of the same has said there is no material adverse impact on the financial position of the company and no material adjustments are required I think this is the big statement that we should be putting out because they are saying there's no material adverse impact on the financial position of the company and no material adjustments were needed to be made in at least the nine months gone by so that is something that we should talk about a bit more. But let me toss it to you, Mayuresh. Uh, what do you make of this entire flip-flop that we have seen on Polycab and any initial uh, you know, sense on the numbers that we have? Afternoon, Anisha. No, I think the numbers look decent enough. Uh, and obviously, I think the kind of scope that the wires and cables business has, uh, unorganized to organize expectations in terms of export opportunities as well. I think the landscape is pretty robust for the entire uh, sector and companies within this sector as well. Uh, so numbers absolutely in line with expectations um, as far as uh, COT3 is concerned. But to a large extent, I think what is expected to happen in terms of uh, the tax implications is something that the street would like to watch out for. And that will remain as the biggest overhang for the stock from a near to medium term perspective. So I think numbers quite reasonable, quite okay. There are structural tailwinds for the sector. But I think the tax issue is something that will keep the stock, uh, especially in terms of price action in a range bound fashion. Okay, that's polycabin trade for you. You're seeing, you saw a bit of a recovery coming in. And again, that recovery in polycab is getting sold in too. And I think the devil lies in the detail, Anisha, like you flagged off, that there are some segmental pressures. And now the stock has slipped into the red. On an overall basis as well, the consolidated margins have actually seen a dip down. It's 13.1 versus a comparable of 13.6. So, uh, you know, aside of this entire IT department issue, which the management is very categorically clarified on in their press release, it's the earnings purely that the market is reacting to right now, that some of their segments are under pressure. Uh, that's polycabin trade for you. And I think this stock may perhaps further drift down because the numbers are looking a little bit weak segmentally. Uh, that said, let's take a look at where LTIM is settling in at, still down about almost 11 odd percent. Kunal, does that challenge uh, uh, the IT rally? Because even today, you know, there are names like TechM, etc., which are still holding out. But LTIM, does that pause that good run that we saw after TCS Infosys' numbers? So I think what this could do is, uh, this could um, you know, get the traditional wagon back into the IT stocks where the large caps would start to outperform. So, you know, there was a very strong uh, you know, kind of an outperformance from the mid cap IT names uh, over the last six, eight months, over the last one and a half years to be precise, I think from September 2022 lows where many of these IT stocks in the entire IT index uh, hit a major bottom for themselves. Uh, you know, in the last three, four months, you saw the large cap IT stocks going you know, into a slight recovery phase, but then the you know, mid-cap IT stocks, they managed to recover exceptionally well. But I think after this kind of a price action move from LNT, uh, Infotech, Mindtree, uh, even for NT Technology Services and, and many of the other mid-cap IT names, I would probably sense that the large-cap IT stocks should try and get back into an outperforming stage. In fact, over the last three, four days, you've actually seen the IT sector being a lot more resilient, especially the large-cap IT stocks. And I strongly believe the likes of Wipro, Infosys, TCS, HCL Tech, they could make a very strong comeback. 
for the next, uh, you know, say one to three months at least. So even if you have a short term kind of a time horizon for the next one to three months, I would believe many of these IT stocks should be at least a 10 to 15 percent higher from current levels, specifically large cap IT names. Okay, that's the take on large cap IT names. That's Polycap still, still still settling in and digesting that earnings reaction. But the stock, of course, has given up all of its gains so far. Um, Remember, after hitting that record high of 5,700 thereabouts just as of December 2023, we've all seen the fall that has happened in the stock. Still, it's uh, sitting at about almost a 28% discount to the industry at the current valuation, which at the peak was about 31 times still. So the scope for disappointment and the scope for the fall in the stock is, of course, much higher and you can see the stock drift down by about almost one percent now as we speak but Nuresh, want to get your reaction in on polycab after the recent correction in the stock what's your reading on the charts so uh, once we see such a large fall with very large volumes uh, the best case is to actually uh, go uh, look at an exit closer to the same prices where it gapped down from so it gapped down around 4900 levels which is where 4900 to 4500 was the drop so that should be a tough area. So going forward, 4,900 would be a big resistance. Uh, so closer to uh, a risky bet would be to trade actually short around that 47, 4,800 area with a stop loss at 4,900. So for now, no trade, but if it uh, bounces much more, would actually be a short trade rather than a long one. That's the take on a Polycap right now, but Indusin Bank should be reporting its numbers soon. Of course, there's a press conference, I think, uh, somewhere between 4 to 5 p.m. So maybe just at that closing mark, we'll get the earnings. But what are the expectations? Let's go across to Gaurav to get a sense. Hi, Gaurav. So Indusin Bank will come up with the result. And before the results, let's see what consensus is expecting from the bank. So net interest income is expected to increase almost by 15, 16.5% and it could come somewhere in the range of 5,200 crore levels. If we talk about PPOP, which is pre-provisional operating profit, that is expected to increase almost by 8%. And if we talk about PAT, which is profit after tax, that is expected to increase almost by 16% this quarter. And it could come somewhere in the range of 2,270 crore crore rupees. Now, talking about provisions, consensus expects banks to uh, uh, re reduce their provisions this quarter almost by 7.8% 7 7 on a YOY basis. And if we look at the provisional data from the bank, they have already registered strong growth in advances of 20% on a YOY basis, while deposits were also up almost by 13.5% on a YOY basis. Talking about the retail deposits, retail deposits share stood at 45% of their total deposits and CASA ratio, which was slightly down by 90 bips, stood at 38.5%. But from now on, what we can expect from management is that we should look for any commentary on the margin trajectory because interest rates are elevated and it, that is likely to impact the profitability. Let's also look at any uh, commentary coming up on the loan growth in FY25. Uh, OPEX number is likely to stay a little elevated and let's... Uh, that is why let's also look at any commentary or the number which would come up for the operational expenses. And lastly, let's also look at any commentary towards CASA ratio because CASA ratio, if it is improved, it, it will, if, if, if it improves later, it will help the bank to maintain its net interest margins. So these are some key takeaways from what the seed is expecting from the bank. So let's wait for the result and let's see how it turns out for the bank. Okay, that's the take coming in and what do I anticipate from uh, Indusin Bank. But let me take it across to Sharad, find out what's the buzz across dealing rooms. Sharad? In focus is Sirka Paints, which is a 2200 crore market cap paint company. And the buzz in the street is that the company is expected to commence its additional capacity operations in its Noida facility. Now, importantly, from this plant, there will be a manufacturer of paint, which will be used in the wood coating segment. Now, importantly, if you look at it, this capacity of the entire company is expected to be roughly 16,000 tons when it comes to the categories of PU, NC, melamine, as well as thinner products. Now, the channel checks also suggest that the Q3 numbers are expected to come on the stronger side as well. And if you look at the stock itself, the stock has given almost 40% returns to the investor from 2023 lows and a slight correction was there over the last two, two to three trading sessions as well. Now, importantly, the stock is also held by Mukul Agarwal promoted entity, roughly holding 3% odd stake and also from the family offices of prominent business houses. 
Okay, so that's the latest coming in as far as um, that cover on the last street is concerned. Just waiting back for some more uh, big buzzers and seeing what's happening. HUL, of course, is something which is going to be in focus tomorrow. Mayuresh, uh, the commentary so far that we've got initially from the provisional, num provisional numbers of all of these FMCG companies is not very enthusing. Uh, part of them are saying that there is sign of rural recovery, but it's not, you know, that visible right now. Um, how should one approach the entire FMCG basket right now? Being very selective, uh, Anisha, very frankly, because I think a lot of players have, uh, as you alluded to, clearly mentioned that rural recovery might uh, be a little bit more sticky in the next couple of quarters. And that's clearly getting played out in terms of how the volumes have grown for companies which have probably reported numbers. Uh, obviously, I think the kind of inflationary impact that we've seen uh, because of lower rainfall and uh, decrease in discretionary spending because rural does form a large part of the FMCG volume universe, uh, the volumes are going to be a little bit uh, on the lower side, which means the price effect will also not be seen. If that probably happens, uh, the combination of volume and value growth might be missing over the next couple of quarters. The best case scenario that gets built up for FMCG companies are on two counts. One, uh, in the coming ra rainy season, I think over the next couple of quarters, if normal monsoons are expected, there can be a healthy growth that can come through in the second half of the next financial year. And the expectations is that input costs should largely remain benign, which means EBITDA margin should see reasonable amount of uh, stability and growth going forward. Valuations have always been on the higher side. And therefore, we are being a little bit more selective here. Uh, obviously, the acquisitions done by Tata Consumer are in the right uh, space in terms of what they are expecting the overall volume and value growth to happen over the next few years. Uh, but I think within this space, I think package pools, QSR companies uh, might be a little bit better off compared to the core FMCG companies, at least at this point. Okay, since you're talking about the packaged companies, let me just bring up the intraday chart of Pratap Snacks and see what that stock is up to because off late, we have seen quite a bit of move on that one as well. Let's see whether it's reacting. Uh, it's up a bit in the trading session. We'll keep tracking that one because there are those important lines at the bottom of your screen wherein it seems that Haldiram is eyeing a majority stake in Pratap Snacks and they're seeking and of course the, the VC firm uh, Peak 15 is looking at exiting the 47% stake that it has in Pratap Snacks. So those are the lines for you at the bottom of the screen and the stock is reacting to that. It's building on to further gains. Uh, uh, Kunal, what's your take on the charts of Pratap if you track it and HUL as well? So Pratap Snacks, we were, uh, you know, I think discussing this a couple of days back that the, the stock at 1250 levels was on the verge of a breakout. Now, I think over there, I'd mentioned 1400 could be a target. So even though the stock is still below its life high levels, I think of 1450, 1500 odd mark, but the recent recovery, the breakout about 1200 levels indicated that the momentum has come back into the stock. So I think 1400-ish is where I would believe that the stock should head towards so maybe another, uh, you know, uh, 70, 80 points, 90 points further from current levels is what I would expect that this momentum would probably get the stock towards. For HUL, on the other hand, the stock has been absolutely sideways. There was a point where, uh, you know, HUL has been a huge underperformer with respect to the FMCG pack, like Tata Consumers, etc. had given a breakout. So I think Marico, HUL, these are the uh, two names which have underperformed significantly compared to Britannia. Nestle over the last one month has corrected post the split. But I think uh, overall, I would believe HUL can stand to outperform from here on. So. I would actually be a bit contra bullish on HUL in case if the stock drops down to say 24, 70, 75 mark on the spot levels could be a good contra buy opportunity. Okay, that's Unilever in trade for you. I mean, I was just thinking to think of it. There were the the rumors were so strong that Haldirams itself is a takeover candidate, and now here's Haldirams buying Pratap snacks. At least that's what the wire agency seem to be reporting. But anyway, we'll address that bit of news once we have some confirmation to that extent. But Unilever 2 is all set to come out with its numbers. Uh, let me take it across to Vinny, find out what to expect. So absolutely, in terms of HUL's numbers for Q3 FI24, we're expecting a mutual performance, nothing exciting on that front. In terms of the revenue growth, around 2% revenue growth is what we're expecting. Profits and around 8.7% growth, while margins, a slight bit of an expansion, 80 basis point expansion on a year-on-year -year basis. EBITDA margins are expected at 24% approximately. 
volume growth like last year you know we have seen uh, last quarter i beg your pardon we've seen in terms of the low single digit that's what expected to continue this time as well so two to three percent volume growth is what we're expecting from hul now let's not forget uh, you know the trends that we've seen in q2 similar trends is likely to be seen in terms of the competition uh, from uh, local players regional players where is that headed uh, that is expected to see an increase as well as what the indication we're getting so yes that continues to be uh, maybe a pain point in some segments for the company premium segment that that's expected to do better than the mass segment and personal care performance we are expecting that to be soft due to the delayed winters other than that food and refreshment low single digit growth uh, as headwinds were there in the nutrition portfolio let's not forget the retail milk prices that's not seen a sharp uh, cut down coming in so in terms of horlicks eh, we are not expecting any price drop in horlicks so far as well but let's keep an eye out on all those commentary fronts as well from the management especially in terms of competition from regional and local players other than that in terms of rural versus urban demand any green shoots in rural area that's something that we want to know especially coming in from such an uh, fmcg major uh, other than that uh, the hfd segment and um, commentary on margins and rm cost is going to be key to watch out for as of now from hul Okay, that's that on HUL, but here's uh, Ashesha telling us uh, about Ultratech Cement. A uh, revenue uptick seems like it's going to be on the cards and higher realizations as well are being penciled in. Ashesha, what's the expectation? Well, yes, we are expecting good set of numbers from Ultratech Cement this time. Realizations are expected to rise by as much as 2% on a sequential basis on account of price hikes that were taken at the start of the quarter. Remember, cement prices did decline in the month of November and December, but on a sequential basis, cement prices rose by nearly 3%. Meanwhile, total costs also declined by as much as 3 to 4 odd percent on a sequential basis due to lower power and fuel costs, as a result of which EBITDA per ton is expected to inch higher by 20% on a sequential basis, led by dual benefit of higher realizations and lower costs. Remember, company has already reported consolidated volumes at about 27.3 million tons, which will be an uptick of 2.5% on a sequential basis and about 5.5% on a year-on-year -year basis. Consolidated revenues could come in at about 16,700 crores, up 4% sequentially. Margins too are expected to expand by as much as 300 basis points on a sequential basis. So yes, all in all, we are expecting good set of numbers. Higher realizations led by higher cement prices and lower costs will lead to EBITDA per ton expansion this quarter. Right. Okay, Ashesha, we leave it at that. That's the expectation coming in from Ultratech Cement. Meantime, keep your eyes out on Polycap. That's fallen about six tenths of a percent. And I think that's a fall of nearly about over a percent from the day's highs for Polycap after its earnings are getting digested. But I think we can take it across to Anisha as well and begin winding up the day. We will do that in just a short while from now. But uh, let's also get in some BTST trades on that note. Nuresh? Vedanta first, the stock has uh, seen a good recovery in the day. Stock loss at 264, target price of 275. Second is the one, Petronet, which has uh, shown related strength, hitting new highs for the uh, week out here of fresh breakout. Stop loss at 235, target price of 245. What about your BTST trades? So I'll go with two buy calls. The first one is around CESC, the stock looking attractive for a trade. Uh, targets of 166, stop loss at 132. And Bank of Baroda apparently is one of the stocks which is actually showing signs of good resilience. So very good pickup from those uh, either sub-220 mark for the stock. I think at 228, look attractive for a target of 238. So another 5% on the upside is what I'm expecting for the stock in the near term. Stop us at uh, 222. Nuresh, uh, I beg your pardon, Mayuresh, what's the strategy uh, for investors who are fully uh, invested right now? Would you say at least take some chips off the table? Be a little cautious? That might be the strategy, Aisha. And uh, I think being a little bit more selective uh, does warrant attention in these markets. Uh, any decline that comes through and if there is no substantial breach of 21,050, which is a 10 weekly moving as we see it at markets per head there, I think that can be a good buying opportunity from those levels. Uh, so I think selective spaces uh, like energy as an example, probably looking at retail as an example, some names in logistics, uh, which in my opinion can do extremely well over the next couple of years. Uh, and few of the PSU banks, I think a few of these spaces, if the market does decline and give an opportunity, look very, very interesting from an earnings perspective over the next 20 to 20 quarters. Right. Okay. 
Well, central government offices, it seems, are going to get a half day on Monday, January 2nd, on account of the consecration of uh, the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. Let's see what uh, the exchanges decide, Kunal, <laughs> on what to do, on whether Even or not Monday is going to be a trading day or a holiday. <laughs> Even central government offices are on half day. Half day, yeah. We're going to already have an additional half day on Saturday. So, additional half day on Saturday and full working day on Monday. <laughs> Just not in for it right now. But anyway, let's see. That's only what uh, the Union Minister has said about central government offices. But let me take it across to Anisha, find out how we're closing in for the day. Anisha? Well, it was another day of decline for the Indian markets that we saw. We, of course, dipped below the mark of 21,300 on an intraday basis. But from there, there was quite a bit of recovery that we made. And we are ending very close to that 21,500 mark on the Nifty. The Bank Nifty, too, managed to see quite a bit of loss during the trading session. But by the end of the day, it was just around that 45,700 thereabouts. So, a slide of almost 300 points coming in for the Bank Nifty. Mid caps and small caps fared a tad bit better, even though they continued to see declines. It wasn't as deep a cut for the broader markets as we have seen for maybe a Nifty Bank or even the Frontline Index. It was a lot more stock specific today and a lot more to do with the earnings reaction. Starting with HDFC Bank itself, which started with a cut of around 4 to 5 percent. From there, it recovered a bit of ground, but still ended the day in the red with a cut of almost 3 percent. So that drag really continued. The biggest light today came in on the IT name, especially LTI mine tree because that saw quite a bit of drubbing at one point of time that stock was down 13 percent ending the day with a double digit cut or thereabouts still down about 10 percent having said that oracle financial from the entire it basket was doing very well for itself ended the day with the gains of around 25 to 30 percent so solid gains as far as Oracle Financial Services are concerned. A lot of result reactions intraday as well. Case in point being South Indian Bank, good improvement in the asset quality, beat coming in on the profitability. South Indian Bank ended the day with the gains of around 8 to 9 percent. Polycap, the numbers were largely in line to slightly muted versus the expectation. There was a clarification also that came by that company did not have to make any adjustments on account of the IT surveys underway, but the stock did not do much after a bit of flip-flop it ended flat for the trading session. You also had Tata Communications, which was reacting to the positive commentary coming through. They are talking about how Calera, one of their acquisitions, has managed to turn a bit positive in the first quarter itself. They see multiple levers for growth going forward, both on an organic and inorganic basis. That stock surged almost 8% by the end of the day. Tire stocks were also doing quite well for themselves. Apollo Tire, for instance, saw an upgrade come by from Axis Capital. So that stock held up with a gain of around 6%. Rub off impact was seen on PCBL as well as well as JK tires. So these were some of the counters we were watching out for. RT Industries announced that big 6,000 crore order, which is split over a period of next four years. That stock was active in the trading session, 5% higher. Other gainers included names like Mahanagar Gas as well as Aurobindo Pharma. On the losing side, however, it was Indian Energy Exchange that continued to see quite a bit of slide. After the 10% cut yesterday, we saw a bit of cut come today as well in the stock price. It was down about 7%. ICICI Prudential was the result reaction. 6% lower on that one, as well as India Mart Nivesh that reported numbers on an intraday basis saw quite a bit of decline. So that's how we wrapped up the trading session today. It was another weekday for the market. Uh, also the, uh, on account of the weekly options expiry, but let's see how tomorrow pans out.